Welcome to the Project 2 Podcast, where we define being the man she needs you to be. Diving into topics like masculinity, honor, emasculation, and culture. That's what this is all about. Being the man you were designed to be. You know, I love the difference in perspectives we both have here. Radical change requires radical change. This is a toolbox for men to have language and techniques to do life well. For fathers, husbands, brothers, and everyone. We're going to hit the world with a tidal wave. Welcome to the Project 2 Podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Project 2 Podcast. I'm David. And I'm Daniel. And today we're going to tackle the topic of honor. It's a great topic. You know, I think a lot of us, we don't really dive too much into this. You know, we have this kind of like just this feeling of, you know, feeling and knowing of what we interpret honor as. And that's really just where it stays. I don't think we ever really dive in too much into what honor really entails and how to live a life of honor or how to live in a culture of honor. Yeah, it's definitely one of those topics that is kind of known about, but not really talked about too much, yeah. unless you're on like a men's retreat or something, it's always going to come up. Yeah, I mean, and there's certain, you know, uh, there's certain messages, sermons, um, you know, people who they definitely like dive more into it than others, but it's not something that I don't think a lot of us practice or live on a, or live consciously on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, something that is not always in the front of my mind is how do I honor, you know, it's just like, it's always there, not a conscious effort or anything. However, what we're going to bring today is a new look on it on how or why it needs to be a conscious effort, why it needs to be something that's always on the front of our mind. Yeah, I, you know, that's something that's, you know, it's real important to me, especially, you know, over the last couple of years, um, you know, just kind of like my life, my life motto is I won't give up. And, you know, that really ties in, you know, for me, when I start thinking about it, I go back into the reasons of why that is so important to me. And it all ties in with, you know, my culture of honor and what I expect of myself on how to be an honorable man, how to be an honorable husband, how to be an honorable father and live those day to day live day to day expecting and consciously knowing and walking in a culture of honor, um, you know, in a life filled with honor and integrity. Yeah, definitely. And I love, so I have the dictionary definition of honor pulled up and when I read it, all the attributes that describes honor are all attributes that I feel like we as Christian men strive to be described as. And the definition says honor is honesty, fairness, or integrity in one's beliefs and actions, a source of credit or distinction. All attributes that should be described with Christianity. Not just with Christianity, should be de- that should be described as you as a person. I mean, if you if you want, in my opinion, if it's something that you want to live, because because let's face it, you know, some people honestly they just don't care. You know, they don't care the kind of life that they live. They don't care what kind of example they set. They don't care who they treat. They don't care about any of that. But if you're someone who's diving deeper into life, who wants to be the man that you were designed to be, who wants to go above and beyond, you know, those are the attributes that you're going to strive to be and strive for on a daily basis. Yeah, I agree. You know, I grew up in California at Bethel Church. And they have what they call their a culture of honor. And that is based on a book that one of the lead pastors there, Danny Silk, wrote. And he describes a culture of honor as an environment that attracts and hosts the presence of God. And what they mean by that is that honor creates life-giving and life-promoting relationships. The key to that being is accurately acknowledging who people are. And I think when you hear that, you know, You can get lost in how to do that, but we always have to look at Jesus as an example here. And in Luke 2, Jesus really exemplifies honoring people for who they are. In Luke 2, we read about Jesus being missing from his parents, and they spent three days looking for him at 12 years old. I I couldn't fathom 
what my parents would do if they spent three days looking for me as a 12 year old. I, I don't even know where I would begin, you know, cause I, I, I have a four year old who just turned, just turned four in January. And if I had to spend three days looking for her, I would be calling every law enforcement agency, the national guard. <laughs> I mean, I would not rest well, yeah, like, until I it, found like, her. You miss, you file a missing persons report after what? Two days. After two days, what are you crazy? I mean, I would file it if I could, if I couldn't find my kid for two or three hours. Yeah, true, true. I mean, I would be down there filing a report. So this is three days they spent looking for him, and then they finally found him teaching at the temple, which, again, another unfathomable idea of your twelve-year-old teaching temple leaders for three days. But what's really cool about this experience is Jesus's response. And he, he responds with a really good reason of why he's there. He's there to do his father's work. And that is appointed by God to be there. And his parents know that he is the direct son of God. So they understand that. However, he doesn't just say, I'm doing my father's work. Leave me alone. He then obeys their ask and follows them home. He goes home with them and he honors who they are as their parents, as his parents, and walks in obedience no matter what he's doing. And I think that's a really good description of what it's like to honor somebody just based on who they are. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, granted, I mean, if if you really take it back and you really start thinking, you know, thinking about it, when Jesus was born, obviously Mary knew, you know, he was the, you know, he was going to be the chosen one, the Messiah, all these wonderful things because, you know, he was born of a virgin birth, which was, it's well, not was, it is completely impossible, but it was possible through God. Yeah. You know, so she already knew that something was different about this child. And it was a learning experience, you know, for them with everything that they were, with everything that they were experiencing and encountering. But again, taking it back to that scenario was here he is teaching and then you bring it back and he honors them right away there was no question even though he was doing his father's work there was no question it was yes mom yes dad i'm coming right home with you you know that is such a prime example i wish my kids would listen to to me like that i wish it was every time the first time but it's not that's just not the reality of you know it's not the reality of parenting it's not the reality um, of expectations in that realm so that was such a beautiful display of honoring your parents from a children's perspective or a child's perspective, I should say. Yeah, of course. And I love that, you know, they, in the Bible, it doesn't say that they were like rip roaring mad. They were so upset with him. You know, they did. They, they honored who he was in that moment as well, understanding why he was there. Right. Which, you know, and I love that, that back and forth because honor, it's all about respect to me. Yeah. Honor means being able to see all of your options and choosing the one that makes sure you are respecting the feelings, the decisions, and the passions of those leading you, walking with you, and those who look up to you, which I think that goes into, you know, honor your parents, like, right, but also honor your children, honor those around you and below you, really. Right. So that example, it's really cool, you know, and he goes on, Jesus lives a life full of honor. He does. He continues to honor his disciples. He washes their feet. He feeds them dinner. He teaches them. He honors his followers by loving them. And he like, even the concept of dying for them could be translated into Jesus honoring those who love him and follow him by saying, I know what you're doing. Here is my gift to you. And then the Lord giving us Holy Spirit, honoring us with his presence, with his guidance and everything. And I think, you know, translating that, that's kind of cool to read about. And like we said, you know, something to think about, but not necessarily make decisions from. However, we can really take these examples and then go forth and choose to honor those in every situation that we are faced with in our work environments, in our home life, you know, in our recreational time. So I want to say to that, like in a working environment, how do we honor those around us? Well, I think it's all about respect. Exactly what you would, exactly like what you were saying. Um, You know, I love, 
you know, we were talking earlier about the movie Remember the Titans. Yeah. And I'm going to play a scene for you real quick. And this, to me, is all about, you know, ownership and respect. So go ahead and just listen real quick and you tell me. All right, man, listen. I'm Gary. You're Julius. Let's get some particulars and just get this over with, all right? Particulars? Yeah. No matter what I tell you, you ain't gonna never know nothing about hey, me. Hey, listen. I ain't running any more of these three days, okay? Well, what I got to say, you really don't want to hear, because honesty ain't too high up on your people priority list, right? Honesty? You want honesty? All right, honestly, I think you're nothing. Nothing but a pure waste of God-given talent. You don't listen to nobody, man. Not even Doc or Boone. Ship and push on the line every time, man. You blow right past them. Push them, pull them, do something. You can't run over everybody in this league. And every time you do, you leave one of your teammates hanging out to dry. Me in particular. Why should I give a hoot about you? Huh? Or anybody else out there? You want to talk about a waste? You the captain, right? Right. Captain's supposed to be the leader, right? Right. You got a job? I have a You've job. You've been doing your job? I've been doing my job. Then why don't you tell your white buddies to block for Rev better? Because they have not blocked for him worth a plug nickel, and you know it. Nobody plays. Yourself included. I'm supposed to wear myself out for the team? What team? No. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look out for myself, and I'm going to get mine. See, man... That's the worst attitude I ever heard. Attitude reflect leadership, Captain. You see, that right there, you know, when you're talking about a working environment, you're talking about different people, that is the first thing that always comes to my mind. Attitude reflects leadership. You know, we got this, you know, thing that all of us always say, you know, you want respect, give respect. You know, I want to be treated this way, so you need to treat me this way. But the problem is we get sucked in and we get tied into this realm and we get tied into this role that, well, he did this to me, so I'm going to act this way towards him. Or she did this to me, I'm going to act this way towards you know her. And that cycle needs to stop. Because the, the thing is here is if we continue on that path, if we continue going on that way, what's going to be the outcome? We're always going to have relationships that don't add up with each other. We're always going to have, you know, attitudes that are just terrible. You know, coming from the shop, you know, coming from where, where I've worked in a, in, in a shop, is there's so much of that going around. You know, well, this person's a you know, piece of crap. This person's this. This person's that. I'm not going to help this guy because he did, he did this. But when you have an attitude like, listen, I'm going to get behind you. I'm going to help you any which way I can. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It changes the entire environment your entire environment around you just completely shifts. People don't know how to react to that. And they're like, oh my gosh. And then the next time you need help, they're like, well, this guy helped me out. You know, I'm going to help him. That right there to me <clears throat> is such a culture of honor and respect for one another. It brings together unity and you can form such a team. You know, we try to do everything by ourselves. And a lot of times that just doesn't work out. So what we want to do is if we partner with people and we respect them and we really rally them on, we can change so much of what's around us. And the thing is, if you don't, if those, if those people around you in your life, they are, you know, they're not doing those kind of things, they're still not changing, then get rid of them. Then you don't need those kind of people in your life. Right. I love that because... I work in a restaurant, so we all have to work together to make sure that things run smoothly. You know, like I, re I really am lucky at the environment that I work in because, you know, we all we do everything for each other. We run each other's food. We're like helping each other's tables, you know, making sure that the customer is being taken care of no matter what. And yeah, there are those times where, you know, that kind of discrimination against uh she did this to me or she did that to my friend you know that can get in the way and it'd be like all right well now all of a sudden that table is upset they're gonna leave a bad review and that affects all of us yeah you know that synergy that it gets interrupted by prejudice and by you know unforgiveness really but instead you know if we walk into that place and we go you know what i'm gonna do whatever i can 
to honor my coworkers today. Whether it's just plainly showing up, not calling out when you don't want to, you know? Because we all wake up on those days and we're just like, oh, I just don't want to go to work today. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have those days all the time. Right. I, that I just don't, I don't want to be there. You know, but something that I learned early on in my career was I, I was under, I mean, I've worked for some terrible managers. You know, I've worked for some leadership that they had no business, you know, being where they were at. But they were placed there for whatever reason. And having to sacrifice and having to put my feelings aside and continue honoring them on a day-to-day, it was, it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Yeah. Because I had to, number one, acknowledge who they were, you know, and I had to respect them, you know, because my job was on the line if I didn't. And I was raising a family, like, I needed to have a job. But by me doing that, the other people around me acknowledged that. And then they treated me more like a leader and more like a manager than they did the actual the person with the actual title. And that led to advancements in my career. Like, without even knowing it, I started moving up the chain, moving up the ladder, all just because of my attitude. Because I had a, I had a winning attitude or winning personality, whatever you want to say it. I just... And all that back, all I was doing was I'm just respecting the people around me. Like, I'm acknowledging that they're you know, who, who they are. And before I knew it, like I said, I was climbing the ladder all just because I had created that mindset of honoring those around me. And it played in my day-to-day life. It played in both my personal and professional life. And it's just the difference that I seen before I had that to when I had that is night and day. Yeah. And that does, it It boils over into your personal life when you've taken that step in your working relationship. Because now you come home, and you don't just come home and take off that layer of honor. It's now embedded inside of you, and you learn to start honoring your family better. Whether, you know, it's your parents and your siblings, or maybe it's your wife or your fiancé or your girlfriend. But choosing to do that, like, honoring thing where you are... Thinking of others in how they and their feelings, decisions, and passions, honoring them through that, consider them in your decision making. All of a sudden, you're you're making advancement in those relationships. You're building trust, you're gaining intimacy, and your life just starts feeling better. That's what honor does to us, is it makes life more enjoyable because those around you are feeling loved and respected and they give that to you in return. And that's all that we ever want, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree more with them with that is, you know, Hey, listen, if we all got along, was in unity with one another, respected one another, treated each other, we'd live in a, we'd live in the wizard of Oz. I mean, it would be a happy go lucky atmosphere, but the reality of it is we don't. And that's because we all have our own agendas. We all have our own, you know, way of thinking. We all have our own life. We all think that we're entitled and we deserve this and we deserve that. And if this person doesn't give it to me, then I'm not going to honor or respect them. And if that person doesn't do it, then I'm not going to honor or respect them and vice versa. Because you're not doing that, the person on the other end is thinking the exact same way. So we're stuck in this, you know, culture. And one of the worst places I see it, and I hate to say it, is the church. You know, is we most churches nowadays, they're the first ones to pin, you know, pick out somebody who says things like this and, you know, without living it. And we need to get back to a time where we just learn to honor and respect one another for who they are. Yeah. You know, we're going through such a time of crisis right now, all because everybody has their own opinion on this, you know, on what's going on. And it's like, hey, let's put the brakes on here for a second and realize that. We need just need to honor everybody. Like, listen, Jesus didn't come to die just for me or just for you or just for her or him. He came for everybody. That includes everyone. There's not one person who's not included in that. Everyone was there. We're all equals in this. So let's just lay down our pride for a minute and respect one another. Yeah. And I think, you know, you can speak a lot towards honor in relationships, but one thing that I've learned is honor is not optional. 
it's not something that you can do if you're feeling good. It's something that is required from you as a human. In a in a speaking to specifically romantic relationships, you have to honor those you're in relationship with. You have to consider them in your decision making. You have to consider them in how they're going to react, how they're going to feel. And sometimes that's a burden, but really it's a awesome opportunity to partner with them and making their dreams come alive and come true and yours because you learn so many skills through that. And like I said, I feel like you can talk a lot about that and your experience with learning that honor is not optional because when you give up on honor, you essentially give up on that relationship. Yeah, you know, and kind of just, you know, pumping the brakes on there for a second to give you guys a little bit of a background here is, you know, I've mentioned a few times I've been married for just about 10 years now. And throughout those 10 years, it has been, I would love to say that it's just been one beautiful, happy time. But the reality of it is, it hasn't been. It's been probably some of the hardest moments of my life. And a lot of that falls on me. Like I, it just, the reality of it is, is I had such a selfish mindset for the first few years of our, our marriage. Like it was all about me. It was, what could I do? How can I advance my career? How can I do this? How can I do this? What was it going to, how was this going to benefit me? And long story short, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll get into like the whole, you know, my whole testimony and everything later on down the road. Uh, but long story short, it came to a screeching halt. I mean, it was like day and night came to a screeching halt where one time I, I woke up and I mean, my wife was gone. Like literally we were done. There was no, I, there just, there was no more marriage. You know, we both, we, we sat down, we talked and we're like, Hey, you know what? If this is how it's going to be, we're out. And we separated for about four or five months. I mean, it was, it wasn't as long as what some people separate for, but it was long enough for me to realize that, Hey, you know what? I messed up pretty big here. I messed up real big and I had a choice to make. Like it was either, it was a choice to either do what I needed to do to restore the hurt, the, the, the mistrust. I mean, everything that had gone on through our relationship or it was, I could just continue going on with what I'm doing. And the thing was, is I remember, you know, on my wedding day, you know, I, I made a covenant and that's something that we all take, you know, everybody, we all take that way too lightly is we don't realize that on our wedding day, it's not just a vow. It's not just getting up to the altar and saying, I do. And I know you're getting ready to get married, Daniel. So, I mean, this is a big one for me is it's not, you're not just saying I do. You're not just saying, Hey, look, I love you right now. And I hope that we can make it through this, but if rough times come, we're out. No, that's a covenant. And that's a covenant saying that for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, I'm going to stick, stick it with you. Like we're going to, we're going to stick in this together. And we, on the both of us, we had forgot that. By the time I came around and realized, you know, what a big jerk I really was and how much I had messed up, my wife was done. I sat down with her. I remember sitting in our living room in Colorado and I told her, I said, Hey, look, I'm sorry. You know, I'm a, I'm a jerk. I'm a knucklehead. Can we just work this out? And she told me point blank. No, like, we're not going to, we're not going to do that. I've moved on and there's too much hurt that's happened here. And that's that. And that was probably one of the hardest days of my life to listen to the woman who you love you know, tell you that there's, there's nothing left there. Like I still love you, but I've moved on. That's the hardest thing in the world. But the thing was, like I told you, you know, one of the things that I live by day to day is I won't give up is that was the exact thing that I told her. As I said, I'm not going to give up on this. And she told me, I mean, she point blank told me, she says, okay, that's fine, but nothing's going to change. And for the next several months, like I worked and worked and worked and put in as much as I could do to help restore. And I had to make the choice was, am I just doing this to win her back? Or am I doing this to create a culture of honor, a culture of integrity inside my life? 
you know, for radical change within my life. And that's what it boiled down to is I wanted to better me as a person. By bettering me, by focusing on me and figuring out the things that I had done in my life, areas that where I went wrong, she was able to see the change, the, 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 the true change that took place inside of me. And then several months later, we ended up working things out. And that's a long story how all of that transpired. But what it boiled down to was I honored her. I honored her in her decisions. I honored her in her choices. And I honored her as a husband and a father. And when we decided, when we came back and I mean, cause it wasn't, it was not a night and day thing. You know, she came back to me and said, Hey, look, I see the changes that are taking place in your life. And I can tell that it's, it's real. And I'd like to give this another shot. And at that point I could have, I could have been the one who said, no, you already told me it's done. We're moving on. But I was hoping and praying for that day. And I said, absolutely. Let's do this. And ever since then, we've had a terrific relationship, you know, and I'm not going to say that we haven't argued or we haven't done anything or gotten into a fight or disagreed since that time, because that's a lie. I mean, we've had several fights since then. But the thing is, is now we have better tools in our toolbox to learn how to navigate through those fights, to learn how to navigate through those conflicts and um, anything that arises. And it's just been we, we learn how to honor and appreciate each other in a whole different realm. So marriage is, marriage is hard. I mean, it's super hard, but it's super worth it because when I honor her, there's such a difference that I can't even explain. And the same goes when she honors me as a husband, there's such freedom and there's such communion and intimacy that happens within that, that it's just awesome. Yeah. I love that, you know, your story is, is it is really cool, you know, and everything. And it does prove that honor changes things and it lays foundations for greater things to happen and everything. And like you said, I am getting ready to get married. And on this journey, what I've, you know, done and what me and my fiance have decided we're going to do is we're going to write our own vows on for the ceremony and everything. And when I like started writing my vows now, because I'm a preparer, I like, you know, and everything. I was looking at the traditional vows. And the one thing that I feel like they miss is that honor also looks like cleaning up your mess when you've made a mistake. Yeah. And that's not something that we promise to each other. Typically on a wedding day is, hey, I'm going to apologize when I did something wrong. But as I was looking over that, you know, one of the commitments that I want to make to my fiance is that When I've hurt you, I'm going to ask for forgiveness and then I'm going to change my ways and I'm going to learn how to honor you better in every single situation. And I think that goes back to the core of creating a culture of honor is realizing that all of us are deserving of being honored. You can't do anything because of who you are that disqualifies you from being honored no matter who it is and that's my firm belief on that no matter what you've done in your past no matter how sorry about it or not you are a son or daughter of God and you deserve to be honored the way that he honors you and given those same opportunities oh yeah I I love that that's just that's beautiful right there and it really is because I think restitution is really overlooked in a lot of different areas is because we can have all these goals. We can have all these, you know, this plan to live a life of honor, you know, live a culture of honor, you know, be, you know, be a man of integrity and all this other stuff. But the hard truth and the hard reality of it is all of us fall, you know, and there's that great saying that every man falls, only the great ones get back up. And that's true. But part of getting up is restoring or creating restitution to where you fell, you know, preventing those areas from happening again, setting up barriers, setting up guards, 
And you know, you're right. If you've wronged someone or if you hurt someone, it is going to them. That's part of the restitution process, you know, is asking for forgiveness, you know, and basically mending that bridge. You know, and I think I think it was a previous episode, like I used the analogy with the board and the nail, you know, that our father told us. But that is just so true, you know, is these mistakes, these things do happen and you can say sorry. But restitution means putting the work in to repair what happened and moving on from it. Yeah, I love it because as you're saying that, it reminded me of was another thing that our dad used to do and our mom but like when we'd be getting disciplined and we'd have to apologize like he used to tell us like sorry doesn't mean that you know what you did it means that you're going to change what you did yeah you know and that's like that's another thing that goes into honor is like i can tell you oh i'm sorry and then turn around and do the same thing again and that's not honoring you that's just manipulate manipulating you right honor is i'm so sorry turning around and guarding myself against that action that led us to that place, you know? Yeah. And, you know, in the like restitution aspects of things, I think one last thing that I really want to hit on with that is honor recognizes that you cannot change how people feel only how you address what you have done and make to make them feel that way. And what I mean by that is, you know, if I did something and to me it was justified, it was right and everything kind of like in the story with Jesus and his parents, I went to the temple, you know, I had a very good reason to go to the temple. However, if you were my parents in that situation, I don't get to change the fact that you spent the last three days in fear of where I was, what I was doing and who was doing what with me. Right. I don't get to change that for you. What I get to change is how I respond to that. And how do I make that right? And that doesn't look like coming up with a bunch of excuses. It For Jesus, it looked like stepping into obedience and following his parents where they told him to go. For me, it might look like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that I what I did made you feel that way. How do I do better next time? And inviting you in on that process and being like, how do I better honor you? How do I make sure that you're being considered in what I'm doing? Because I want to continue this relationship and I want to prioritize your feelings, your emotions, and your future in mine. Yeah, that's so good right there is bringing, you know, bringing your partner in on your journey with you. And that was so crucial when we decided to, you know, when we we decided to, you know, kiss and make up and, and really just move forward in our relationship. Uh, but when we decided that, it wasn't just about... It wasn't just about moving on, like saying, hey, let's forget it. It was there was a lot of communication that took place. It was, hey, look, I want to make sure that we don't fall into this again. You know, and I want to make sure that we can not forget about what happened because that's a part of our testimony. You know, that's a part of who we are as a married couple. You know, that's a part of the obstacles we overcame. But what I want to do is I want to set up protection. I want to set up barriers to block us from ever going there again. Boundaries. Set up boundaries. And that was inviting her in my life and her inviting me in her life to communicate and come together and be a part of each other's journey and recognize the different areas where I had no idea that I was made. Like I knew I was making certain mistakes because those were obvious to me. But there were so many other areas that I had no idea. Little things. Like, I mean, and that, honestly, little things down to, hey, dishes in the sink. You know, something that to me was so minute, but to her was such a huge deal. Little things like taking the garbage out or little things like making, you know, sweeping the rugs. I mean, just, and I know those are, you know, broad examples of, you know, cleaning and this and that, but... Those were things that I completely overlooked. And when I realized how much those different things mattered to her, I stepped back and I said, you know what? I'm going to make a conscious effort at this because I want to honor my wife. And if that makes her happy, and if those are things that, you know, I can do to prevent a blowout or another episode or something that leads up to that, because it wasn't, that wasn't what caused us to separate. 
But those were just all the things that just added to the cup, added to the cup. And they were just fillers until finally one day that cup just completely exploded. Yeah. So that's what that's what the restitution and inviting someone in and helping each other, you know, helping each other along the way to understand each other better. That's how you create that culture of honor. Right. So, yeah, guys, if there's one thing that we really want you to take from today, it's that honor is not optional. It's a lifestyle that we have to live. And I want to invite you guys to reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook if you're in a situation where you don't know how to honor those around you. You can DM us or find our emails or reach us online. But thank you guys for coming into this episode and we'll see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this week's episode. If you want to learn more and stay up to date with what we're doing, check us out online at theproject2.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Project 2 and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you next week.